Hi, and welcome to another edition of Sartorial Talks. Today we're going to speak about another sartorial adventure. In our little small series, we've been talking about socks that may be adventurous for you to try. We've been talking about shoes that maybe you don't anticipate that you're going to buy, but if you do buy, you'll be surprised at how much you use them. And finally, we're speaking about hats. I'm not sure which order it's gonna be broadcasted, but these are our three subjects. When you talk about hats, you have to admit that hats can be really terrifying or really comforting. There's a dichotomy there. It's sort of like a scale from terrifying to comforting. And when I say terrifying, when you try a hat, you know it's, it's right there on your head where your face is. It's a very bold statement. It's something that feels strange because you're not used to doing it if you've never worn a hat before. But if you have a father or grandfather, for example, my dad, he, when I was growing up, had hats hanging in about all the main rooms of the house. And he developed a sort of relationship or a kinship with his hats. And it was so natural when he wore one that it didn't even occur to me that he was wearing a hat. So this is the scale we're talking about when you dip your toe into the water of wearing a hat. So I hope that you will come along with me and just sense whether this is something that you want to try or not. And if you do try it, I would really love to read about it later in the comment section. So let's get started with talking about holder ears, the parts of the hat. And you know, parts sound so dull, but you know, it's really not dull for a hat. When you think about the different parts of the hat, it's very simple. The first thing is the crown, as if you were a king, queen, prince, princess, who wear a crown. Well, this is a crown. You can't forget that. It's so easy. And then you have the brim, which connects to the crown. And it can be larger brim, can be small, as you're going to see. The brim is also probably the second most defining factor of the hat. And then you have the band. The band. Self-explanatory. I don't need to say anything else. But the other thing is the dent. You may or may not have a dent, but the way to remember the dent, it's as if you karate chopped the hat and created a dent. Very simple. The final thing for you to remember is the pinch. And how easy is that? You pinch the, the hat when you tilt the hat, and these are the pinch points. So this is a, these are the parts of the hat. Now let's go to the types of different hats. So let's jump right in and start with the Hamburg hat. It's just a felt hat with what we call a kettle curl brim. It's kind of on the smaller scale, and it has a single dent on the crown. Uh, there's a little bit of history here with the Hamburg hat. Of course, it does sound very German, right? Well, Ad Edward VII actually started wearing this hat from time to time after he visited Hess, Germany. Um, Savile Row, uh, pegged this hat also the Eden hat because Anthony Eden wore it in the 1930s. And finally, which to me is extremely interesting, Dwight Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, eschewed the top hat, which was normally worn at inaugurations, in favor of the Hamburg hat. And so this was a new precedent for hats during presidential inaugurations. The next type of hat we're going to look at is the Panama hat, and I'm almost certain that you've heard of the Panama hat. And although it's called a Panama hat, it is actually made in Ecuador. And it's made from a material from the palm tree, and it's usually light in color. The particular straw that is called the toquila straw. And it's a very fine art to craft these Ecuadorian hats. They're in different crowns, they have different pinches, they have different bands, or some people say ribbons. Very versatile hat. Um, Ecuador has been making these hats since the 1600s, so it's quite a tradition. It's known to be seaside, a tropical hat. Um, there's a history of miners in California wearing the hat. Also, another president, Theodore Roosevelt, um, wore the hat. And from this point on, a lot of the film stars began to also wear the hat based on the inspiration they found from Theodore Roosevelt. The next hat is kind of a funny name. Maybe you've heard of the pork pie hat. And it is named after a British pork 
pie dish. And you can tell that from, and we'll show you a picture of the pork pie dish, from the top of the hat, which this is a new term. We're looking at the top of the crown. It's a telescopic crown. It's the identifying factor of the pork pie hat. And that's what you want to look for when, if you decide to try one. The famous Buster Keaton was the one that immortalized this hat. And he owned actually more than 1,000 pork pie hats, which is Un, I can't even phantom that. Where do you put these hats? But he owned more than a thousand of them. After that, um, jazz musicians started wearing the hats in the 1940s. And um, perhaps even today, you'll see some um, jazz musicians um, donning these hats. Finally, Gene Hackman wore this hat. Do you know the movie? It was in the French Connection in the 1970s. It was a very strong statement that probably also inspired a lot of other people to try the hat. The next hat we're going to look at is the boater hat. It's a straight brimmed hat. It's got a flat crown. Uh, it's worn by boaters, sailors, rowers, and even barbershop quartets. It's really nice to wear a boater hat with a summer suit, and it's it's nice in the in the point that it helps you. Um, it protects you from the sun, and it also gives you that kind of Flair. That really makes a statement, especially in the summer. Again, Keaton wore the boater hat. Charlie Chaplin also wore the boater hat along with Harold Lloyd. Now we're going to move to the fedora hat. The fedora hat is probably the most known hat of all of the ones that we're, we're talking about today. It has that signature punch right in the middle, that indentation that looks like you almost it. This is the identifying factor of the fedora hat. It has quite a wide brim and it has something unique. It's got a teardrop shape. If you see this very refined area, this is a bespoke hat. It was made by Pauline Brosset in Paris. Um, if you want to know a little more elements, I'm going to give you some specific elements because this is a very important hat. It's got a 4.5 inch crown typically and a 2.5 inch brim. So those are some technical terms that you can be aware of if you want to go out and buy a fedora and know indeed that you are purchasing a fedora. There's a reason that the fedora is the fedora. It was based on the name of a play in 1882 by Sarah Bernhardt and she wore the hat and just gave this international phenomenon to that the hat itself and it never slowed down. Even today, as I said, the fedora is probably the most well-known hat of all. Later, you already guessed it, gangsters wore the hat. Orthodox Jews wore the hat. Also, Prince Edward wore the fedora in 1924. Um, as well as Indiana Jones in 1981 in the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. So there's a lot of uh, popularization of this hat, which can make it easier to try out. The next hat we're going to speak about is the top hat. I'm sure you've all already seen many, many examples of the top hat. It's a very tall hat. Um, it's made out of beaver, usually for warmth. And it's really became part of the landscape in the 1700s. Uh, the most popular top hat is the stovepipe hat. Do you know who wore the stovepipe hat? Maybe you do. Abraham Lincoln adopted this hat. He's known for this hat throughout his life, and he's even known to place documents inside the top of the hat, which I always have been fascinated with and, and wanted to actually see the hat and where he placed the documents. Uh, today, people still wear top hats. They wear them with white tie attire. They wear them with morning coats and dress. And of course, they wear them to Royal Ascot. The seventh hat we're gonna look at is the bowler hat. Now this may not seem like a highly popular hat to you, but just listen and you'll see how popular the bowler has become. It's a hard felt hat with a round crown. And it's, it's kind of small compared to other hats. It was invented in 1849 by a royal family member named Edru Edward C.O.K.E., but it's not pronounced Coke, it was pronounced Cook. And from that time on, the Wild West adopted this hat. I mean, forget cowboy hats, forget sombreros. It was actually the bowler hat that ruled in the Wild West. And there were a lot of common names that you might recognize that wore this hat, like Butch Cassidy, um, Billy the Kid, and there's a few. If you watch Westerns, take a look and see how often you spot the bowler hat. When I think about it, I remember a lot of train scenes 
with people wearing bowler hats. So this is a really fun thing to know and something that might encourage you if you tap into that personality trait to give the bowler hat a try. Now we're going to move to the trilby hat. It also has an indented crown and it's made from different materials. It can be made from rabbit, it can be made from tweed, or it can be made from straw. Um, the front brim is snapped down and this is what you have to remember about the trilby hat because people get the fedora and the trilby confused. But if you see the snap down of the trilby hat, you'll automatically know um, what it is. And the funny thing about the Trilby hat is there's some kind of animosity and love for this hat. People hate it because they think it's a bastardization of the fedora, and then people love it because they think it revived the old tired hat, which is known as the fedora. So it really depends on your attitude, whether you're into this modern type of view or you prefer to stick to hardcore tradition. Um, the Trilby's, you know, I think you have to put it on your head and check it out and see if it works with your head shape and your morphology or not, and then decide whether the Trilby's for you. Finally, I'm just going to touch on two different types of hats. One is the Stetson, and I call it the Stetson because that is the formal term for it. Um, as you can imagine, it's also known as the cowboy hat. Now, the cowboy hat does not really seem like a hat you would wear with suits, does it? And the only reason I'm mentioning it today is because I sent out an Instagram post asking for anything anyone wanted to, to know about hats. And one person particularly asked, can you wear a cowboy hat with a suit? So to respond to you, I'm going to show you a few Pitti Womo pictures of um, someone that's made a name for himself, wearing a cowboy hat with a suit, and you tell me if you think that it can work or not. I basically think you can do anything you want. If you feel like you want to express yourself some way sartorially, then that's how everything gets started in terms of trends or people being inspired by you. You shouldn't be shy to try new things and you should not be upset if people react negatively or not to you. The last hat that I want to touch on just briefly, because I'm personally fascinated with this hat, is the Cordobon hat. It's a Spanish hat. It's actually, from what I understand, part of the sombrero family, but don't worry, I'm not going to put on a sombrero. But it's, it's just the, the most simple hat, and even I think a tiller hat is similar in construction. It has a flat crown, and it has a flat brim. It's just got a very like, strong personality in the most simplistic way, and you'll see the Spanish um, that come to Pitti Womo almost always are wearing this type of hat. It has a drawstring too, and I imagine that's for wearing in windy conditions when you don't want to lose your hat. Okay, the final part is the fun part. We're going to talk about styling the hat, what you do when you're ready to try a hat. Okay, the first thing you have to do is wear something that you really love. You know, if you're going to go to the sartorial path, put that suit on that you really like, that you really feel good in, like a good pair of jeans. And when you're there, at that point, you're feeling really good in your clothes, that's the time you need to go out and try your hats. Um, I will give you an example of how you may try a hat. Now, I know in some forums, I've read that tilting the hat isn't really necessary, that you can wear it straight on. I happen to disagree with like 90% of the hats. I think you should tilt them when you put them on, when you're styling them. And I'm just gonna show you, hopefully entertaining example. So if I put this hat on, I'm gonna naturally tilt it a little bit. And that's gonna give it like, you know, uh, it's gonna give it a personality. So you see, I'm not going crazy with the tilt. I'm just giving a small tilt to the side. And then I'm just kind of feeling the hat, sort of like it's, it's part of who I am. And when you do that, you, you, you create an attitude. You know, you're, you're saying, I feel good wearing this. And, and I want to wear it more. You know, you're giving this type of ambiance of comfort. Now, if you wear the hat straight on, let me show you the difference. It's kind of crazy. So if you, if you wear the hat straight on, it's sort of like, I'm wearing a hat. You know, it's weird. Don't do that. Don't wear the hat straight on. I don't think that anyone should do that unless they're wearing a straight brimmed hat. And I'll show you that a little bit earlier. So let me just fix the spike. Get the attitude. Feel the hat as part of you. Let the personality come out. And most of all, try to feel comfortable with it. And so after you reach that comfort level, start trying other hats. This one, I don't know what I'm going to wear it with, but it's this... Uh, Spanish style hat, and this is when you can wear a hat straight on. If I tilt this, it's gonna look weird. So I like it because it looks kind of like a, 
badass attitude, you know, and, and it kind of makes you, gives you some energy, has a good feeling. And so maybe one of these hats you try is going to do the same thing for you. You need to find something that's going to like wake up your personality, make you feel good, make you want to go outside. And this is one of the hats I'm going to figure out how to wear later on. The next thing I want to say about hats is hats can make you feel like you're shining sartorially in a comfortable way, but they can also do the opposite and make you feel like you can hide from society. This is the cool thing about hats. It's the most bipolar, bipolar opposite accessory of any accessory that I know of. So you could also wear a hat. For example, I'll use the fedora. If you want to go outside, you're going to pull this down. A little lower, you're going to have probably your mask on and your glasses. You're going to be completely anonymous when you go outside. And my daughter used to do this all the time. And, and she's actually the one that got me interested in hats. So you look at a hat as a way to express yourself and the way to use it to protect yourself, say, from the weather or a way to be more incognito. So have fun with hats. That's my message. So the whole point is have some fun with hats. And for goodness sake, have a little adventure and give it a try. And you know, I always say, please comment. In this case, I really would like to know what you think. And especially if you can give some advice to these people who want to give hats a try. So I hope to see you next time on Sartorial Talks. Until then, ciao.